We're here in the beautiful Amsterdam, we're here at Scheepvaart Museum and we're here with uh, Giel Ruiter. How are you doing, Giel? Good, thank you very much. Uh, could you please introduce what kind of profile do you have? I can do. Uh, I guess today I was invited uh, because of my ba investment banking background. I worked for a lot of big international banks, uh, Goldman, UBS, Credit Suisse. I ran their Dutch operations. Uh, I quit about two years ago. Uh, I wanted a different life. I didn't. Was it a relief? Yes, it's <laughs> still today. <laughs> um, I took a year off, uh, decided I wanted to use uh, my knowledge, my skills uh, for the betterment of smaller and medium sized companies. Uh, not because they're different, uh, but because uh, you can make an impact uh, there. I lost touch with that impact. I think as you grow uh, older and more senior within banks, uh, you're not allowed to really get on the work floor and uh, turn the knobs anymore. And that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and hence my uh, introduction to Tim, who uh, needed advice, who needed help uh, to grow his company. Tim uh, Hoeksma from... Uh, Tim Hoeksma is the founder uh, and owner currently of uh, Ockel. Uh, and Ockel is a very innovative uh, mini computer company. Uh, that grew uh, through crowdfunding, uh, very innovative products uh, that is now on the kind of verge of, uh, you know, mass market breakthrough uh, and that needs new funding. And there were where we were finding it very difficult uh, to convince people that, uh, you know, an entrepreneur from The Hague could really challenge the status quo uh, by the big hardware manufacturers uh, and to find uh, professional investors or, you know, whether that be private equity or venture or uh, financial institutions uh, to back such uh, ambitious and innovative plans. Um, we thought, well, why not do it differently uh, and why not go to the crowd? Uh, and what I think nine months ago was still uh, very innovative. There was no real uh, security token uh, that had been issued out of the Netherlands. Uh, we went to research, we went to the US where these things were becoming more and more en vogue. Mm. Uh, even I as an investment banker was shocked uh, by the fees that were being charged by the people that were bringing these things to market and thus we decided to go our own way. What kind of fees are we thinking or what kind of percentages? Uh, I saw numbers uh, 15, 20 percent which I find yeah, utterly ridiculous. Uh, of, the of the amount raised. Uh, so you know, I find that uh, almost criminal. Uh, so I said to Tim, uh, we shouldn't do that as a matter of principle. Uh, you know, sure, we need the money. Yes, we want to grow. Uh, but I don't want to sponsor uh, that kind of business. And I don't want to be part of that kind of uh, business. We have a real proposition. We have a real business. We have real products. We have real revenues. Uh, there's no reason why if we make uh, these tokens, which are basically just digital shares, people wouldn't want to buy them. Uh, without having to resort uh, to you know all kinds of platforms for distribution. Mm. We have uh, thousands of fans in 88 countries in the world uh, that buy our products that are willing uh, through crowdfunding to send us you know large sums of money uh, in faith uh, in the hope that they will once receive such products. Uh, why wouldn't they also send us similar amounts of money in faith uh, in the hope to once receive dividends uh, from our company. And hence we went on this uh, project. We found a partner in the Netherlands who was the first to have issued uh, a digital securitized token. Biolex. Biolex. Um, who had pioneered, if you will, the technology. Uh, not uh, because uh, you know they needed the money so badly, but more uh, out of uh, technological uh, interest uh, more than anything else, and because they were fed up with uh, the status quo and the cost of doing business in the traditional uh, financial system, uh, and more uh, you know out of just uh, you know rocking the system, if you will. Uh, and we were lucky to, to be able to team up with them. And when they heard our story and our ambition, uh, they obviously uh, wanted to work with us and, 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 and create this security token. Mm. To me, the security token, even though there's not so many of them yet, mm. uh, I think we're the second in the Netherlands, there's many more in the US, uh, is, is yeah, only, only a fraction as exciting uh, or as uh, hard to fathom as uh, cryptocurrencies. Mm. There were uh, cryptocurrencies have no real inherent value um, you know they are uh, technologically scarce uh, and thereby have some form of value and therefore it can be trusted as a means of exchange it is hard to imagine a world where 
uh, governments and and you know national banks will give up uh, the authority to create currency. Mm. Uh, and so I love the idea. I love the idea of taking away that power from governments. Uh, you have cryptocurrencies, or <laughs> yes, <laughs> Bitcoin. But, but uh, no, not Bitcoin. Uh, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I more as a as a rebel uh, than as a believer in the value. Mm. Um, that to me is very different with a security token. A security token is a share. It's nothing but a share. It's just uh, digital. It is inherently secure. Uh, it is uh, enormously cheap uh, to transact in uh, and therefore is by definition the future. The only thing that is making it difficult for people to get their head around it today is there are no real exchanges for them yet. Mm. Yeah, to me, it's a bit of a chicken and an egg thing. Mm. As soon as there's enough uh, security tokens, uh, there will be a need uh, and, a, and a financial uh, incentive mm. to have exchanges and it's no secret that you know the biggest and smartest money in the world today is backing all kinds of initiatives uh, to create such exchanges and to me you know they, they will be a reality um, you know Goldman Sachs with Circle 100% mm -hmm. so question is regulation you know how and when will regulators get their head around that to me what do you think yeah it's just gonna happen and what will happen is they'll start small They'll start in uh, parts of the market that you know aren't uh, core, uh, aren't uh, you know if they fail or fall over, uh, won't topple the system. Mm. And then as the the, the technology and uh, you know our comfort with the technology matures and, and increases, you know it, it it'll become ubiquitous because it's just better. Mm. And and how do you see the role of the Dutch regulator AFM? Eh? Um, I mean they can actually in retrospect can uh, actually uh, yeah take a penalty uh, uh, on 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 um, yeah on this business model on this financing model yeah. how do you see how do you see their role well i mean mm. i think if you if if you're not doing anything wrong so you you're not uh, creating some kind of ponzi scheme or or you're not uh, telling uh, untruths mm. Uh, there is no desire on uh, behalf of the AFM uh, to restrict uh, the free flow of capital. Mm. Uh, fundamentally, why would they do that? Mm. So, as long as you're on the straight and narrow, I don't think you have anything to fear from the AFM. And the problem that the AFM is, how do you actually regulate this, right? I mean, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to do with uh, many, many more parties than a few banks that you can actually go to and touch and control and walk into the boardroom and demand papers and ledgers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they now have to get their head around, you know, that being distributed in the cloud with a gazillion parties being, uh, you know, part of that party. Um, that, that's difficult. So mm -hmm. I, I, I understand the difficulty. Uh, I, I don't think there is a, a desire or a need to you know, think very differently. They just need to get their head around it. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to take time. And I think it happens incrementally. It won't be big bang. You know, they will start. They will let small companies like Ockel, like Biolex, uh, pave the path, mm -hmm. uh, create the technology. Look how it works. Mm. See if investors are interested. Uh, you know what goes wrong, and then I think when things go wrong, they will intervene. Uh, but it will be sorry uh, to interrupt, but there will be like a KYC and AML uh, procedure. Every investor has to go through these procedures. Well, the issue the the issue is that if you own a dollar or a hundred thousand or a million dollars, nobody really knows where the money came from. Right, and if you deposit it in a bank and you start doing all kinds of things with it, uh, especially funding terrorism and things we don't want, then people want to know where the money came from. With uh, cryptocurrencies or securitized tokens, you don't have that problem because you always know where it came from. It's it's stuck in the blockchain. Yeah. There is no, <laughs> you <Yeah>. cannot <laughs> uh, obscure where it came from. And so, you know, in a way, it, it kind of absolves the regulator from a whole bunch of problems that they currently have, which they desperately try to control, but don't really have the means to. Mm. In a way, we solve that problem for them. Um, yeah, so, so uh, no. I, don't, I don't see the problem. The, tri the trick is, you know, can they get a head around, uh, around it? And before they open it up for the mass public, they want to get some kind of comfort in that it actually works and that it's stable and that, you know, the people that are dealing with it are trustworthy. And yeah, and that's mm. going to come over time. Um, and how do you see actually the future of currencies, cryptocurrencies, and the status quo? Uh, the status quo of the existing powers that be, actually. Yeah. I mean, that's the 
That's a tricky one, eh? Yeah, I find that, that so there where I am quite outspoken about the fact that um, uh, crowdfunding, blockchain, artificial intelligence uh, will have a massive impact on the financial system as we know it. And I think it's the beginning of the end of the financial system of, as we know it. Uh, I, where does I, it end? I, I, I think, you know, the, the function of, of banks uh, as the the, the keepers, uh, the safe, safeguarders, the custodians of money and the recyclers of that money uh, will be limited uh, because uh, that function is not necessary if we end up trusting the blockchain. Hmm. Now that's a big if and the question is, you know, when will the world uh, be ready to do that at large? Uh, but it's about trust. But, yeah. but, but if it happens, then you don't need the bank to fulfill that function, i.e. end of story. Now, with a currency, uh, it's not only about trust, it is about power. Mm -hmm. And if governments are to give up the power to create currency, uh, yeah, you, 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 th th that poses all kinds of questions that I can't get my head around. Mm. And so there, where I can see that for a company, it's easy to create uh, a crypto uh, share or a digital share. And why wouldn't you do that if it's easier, if it's cheaper, uh, if it makes it easier for everybody and you're not... But for a government to give up its rights to print, I think is a very hard thing to imagine. Mm. Um, and therefore, you know, making them um, digital is the easy part, but uh, you know, making them totally digital, i.e. there is no government involved in determining how many dollars or you know, crypto dollars there are, yeah. I find hard to imagine. Yeah, yesterday I saw a nice uh, sem seminar or presentation of Willem Middelkoop. He was thinking actually of a central bank coin. Eh? And maybe yeah. the central bank coin could be an option. What do you think of that idea to have this SDR coin? Coin. Yeah. yeah, well, exactly. And so then all you're doing is you're, you're creating a digital version of the dollar, yeah. but you're not uh, doing that which I think today is still uh, the, the core premise of uh, most of the cryptos that are out there, which is, you know, some kind of uh, sure. kicking uh, the system and saying, you know, we are not dependent on a government for uh, determining how many and what the inflation will be. It's all technologically based and, and, and uh, programmed. Uh, but for sure, you know, there's no reason why we can't digitize currencies as, as well as we can digitize shares. But yeah, the Bitcoin is no such currency. Yeah, and we've seen, I mean, do they have the ability to actually disrupt themselves? I mean, we've seen the cable companies, we see the telecom companies, I mean... Look, I, I think, you know, at some point uh, people will no longer want uh, pieces of paper in wallets. Uh, I think that's just old school. Uh, <laughs> I think we're already there. Uh, and so it, it, there's a small step uh, between euros in a bank account and uh, a plastic card uh, and, you know, crypto euros in a bank account uh, with a hardware ledger. Uh, I don't think that's the big step. The big step is actually taking the government out of the equation. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much and uh, all the best. <laughs>